On today's show, we're going to tell you how to uh, put a ring on it. Good afternoon and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at YouTube, youtube.com slash Photo Joseph, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, but every once in a while we do an afternoon show, which is what this is at 3 p.m. Pacific, just to try to give some folks on the other side of the little marble floating through the sky that we call home a chance to tune in live. So welcome. If any of you are here from the other side of the rock, Welcome, glad to see you here. It's always lovely to have you. And if you are watching live, remember that you can participate in the chats, in the comments. It means I get to bring your comments up on screen. We can have a little discussion at the end of the show today. Since this is live, we will do a Q&A. You can ask anything you want. It doesn't have to be about this. Obviously, it's lovely if it is. It doesn't have to be. We can talk about whatever you want. We can be here until you're done. With that in mind, let's get on with the show. So this is one of those shows where I get, I get emails a lot from sellers on Amazon, and I know a lot of YouTubers do. And it's funny, I'm in this like small area of YouTuber where I'm big enough where companies start reaching out to me going, here, do you want our product to test, review, do a show on, whatever. Um, and just a little bit bigger, it's gonna get to the point where it's like, yeah, this is too much. This is too much, get away, I don't have time for this, I don't have enough, sh I got a box, I have a pile of stuff like this to do videos on. Not all of them which, not all of which will get reviews, um, just the ones that I think are actually interesting enough. But, um, but this is gonna last forever, which is a good thing and a bad thing. But you know, it is what it is. So today's weird product is a ring light. It comes in a lovely, big, huge box like this. And the idea behind this ring light is that it is for doing this type of thing, live productions. Uh, any video, obviously, really, but ideally live productions. You've got a really nice sized ring light. Don't worry, the orange thing comes off, we'll get there. Really nice big size ring light. You can put your camera in here. It even comes with a little mount for your smartphone. And it even comes in this lovely purple velvet bag. Uh, this, it's so like, lush. I don't know why of all the things. Anyway, it comes with this little mount for holding your smartphone. So you got a little stretchy, squeaky, mousy thing there. You can stick your smartphone in that. It's really snug. Um, this thing, by the way, let's get a little close-up shot here. This, so there's the stretchy, squeaky guy. It's got a quarter 20 on two sides. So you could mount this if you wanted to put it like this for any reason, and then tilt the head down. You could, or um, you know, I'm just going to leave it this way. That's kind of its default position there, if you will. And this is a tiny, tiny little ball head. It's a little ball head here. So you're going to mount this inside of the light. We'll see where that goes momentarily. Um, standard cold shoe type of a mount on here. This whole contraption here is designed to screw into the studio post here. So your light, your ring light, has a post in it. So essentially, all you have to do is screw this thing in here. Let me just get that on there real nice and tight and quick and stick your smartphone into this. There we go. And we'll actually do that momentarily here. Stick your smartphone into there and you've got light coming at you. So I'm gonna take Ryan's phone. Ryan was willing to sacrifice his phone for me today. I promise not to break it. Um, and uh, because mine, for some reason, my iPhone 10, when you rotate it sideways, the HDMI out doesn't rotate when it's in the camera mode but his iPhone 6 does, so kind of curious. So when we get to the part where we're actually looking through the phone, if you're going, ooh, the camera quality is not that great, remember it is an iPhone 6, this does go back a ways, so uh, the quality of the camera itself would be better if we had a better phone, but the newest one isn't rotating for the HDMI out. I, I don't know why, but there you go. Anyway, so that mounts in there like so, and that's really pretty much all there is to it. Let me tighten this down. Now, this part here, fortunately, comes off. I have no... Honestly, why would you want a full CTO orange cover? I mean, you'd have to be in some pretty gnarly light for this to be the appropriate white balance. It's kind of hard to really fathom. Now, they do make one of these that has a bicolor setup in it, so you can actually do a color temperature tune on it. And the only reason I even know that is because if we look at the back of the device here, let's get this in the frame, we have right here our power and uh, dimming knob. It's a nice solid switch on that and nice big dimming range. There's your DC input. And this knob right here, according to the manual, is for the color temperature tuner, which tells us that there is a version of this unit that has bicolor lighting in it. Which I often, as I actually just said on last week's show, I said that I often recommend against going with color tunable lights. This would be one of those exceptions, actually. I think the color tunable version of this would be quite good, allow you to just balance that in a little bit. 
One of the reasons I say that, I'll give you two reasons for that. One is you never know what kind of environment you're going to be in. If you're using something like this, it's probably not the most controlled thing in the world. I mean, maybe you're in your kind of home environment, whatever, but if this is the only light source that you have, well, it'd be nice. You're probably balancing with some other lights in there. It'd be nice to have a little control over it. Um, the second reason is that the light that we get out of this in daylight balance is not very, I mean, it's daylight, but it's got a color shift to it. Now, I'm going to walk you through all this when I hook it up, and I'm gonna, we're going to be looking through a big studio camera where I can make color adjustments. Clearly, you can't do that with your smartphone or even many DSLRs that many YouTubers would be using. You just don't have that level of control, but you do have automatic or, or even better custom white balance, which is going to negate the problems. But just to know that the light you're getting out of it that is supposed to be, I don't know, 6500 or 6, whatever it's supposed to be, it, it's got some color cast to it. Uh, but I think it's not going to be a problem for most people. Incidentally, in the manual, I love this. Item number two, the device is not intended as a lighting equipment. Please do not continuous work over six hours. Well, that's good advice for everybody. Nobody should work over six hours continuously, but there you go. Okay, so that's it. It's a ring light, LED light. It's got the little mount for your camera. You can obviously, uh, for your smartphone, you can take this off and use that post to mount anything. As you're going to see in a moment here, I'm going to put this on a light stand in front of my studio camera, so we're going to be using the studio camera for it. Uh, it also comes with a light stand, actually, which is pretty good. It's a kind of a piece of, it's not a very, let's just say that you'd probably be better off using a different light stand, especially if you're going to put an expensive camera on the thing. Um, but, you know, in a pinch, it works. And if all you're going to hold up is this thing, then, you know, it's fine. Um, you might want to sandbag it, though. Anyway, so that's that. To turn this thing on, we obviously have power. Let's plug some power into this thing. And not that you can really tell from the video here, but uh, we'll just do this. We'll do kind of a dimming. You can see from your dimmest to your brightest setting. So, you know, it's not super bright. I mean, after all, let's face it, you're going to be looking into it like this, right? You don't necessarily want it to be blinding. You're going to be looking. It actually tells you in this, too, not to look into the light. <laughs> and you're thinking, isn't that kind of the point of this is to be looking into anyway I guess they have to say that uh, but that's it so let's let's put this thing up over there we're going to uh, put it up in front of that camera before I do that though I want to remind you guys of the way this show works we operate on a value for value model around here and what that means is that if you have taken value from today's show there's all kinds of ways you can give value back the easiest and most obvious one in a show like this is to find the affiliate link down below if you decide that this is the kind of thing that you just can't live without so go ahead and pick up a copy of this light using one of the links down below. That would be most welcome and most appreciated. And if, uh, if that isn't, uh, isn't quite your cup of tea, if that's not the kind of thing you want to do, and you still want to help out on the show, then by all means, you can contribute any other number of ways using that link you saw back there, photojoseph.com slash support, all kinds of ways you can help us out and keep us on the air here. But in the meantime, well, let's take a look at this light. So I have connected the light. Let's make sure it's up all the way. Full brightness it is. It is pointing at a color chip card. And you go, ooh, well, that looks quite nice, actually. That lighting looks pretty good there. I mean, it's a good camera, obviously, right? It's the 4K studio cam, the Blackmagic studio cam. I got a good Lumix lens on there. So, you know, it's a nice setup. But um, the colors look great, right? Well, let's just take a look at what I've done to those colors. Let's take a look over here at the interface for that studio camera. And if you look closely at my colors in here, you'll see that I have really shifted the camera on the red, the red down, the blue up. The highlights are definitely not all in sync. Um, the shadows are pretty well placed out. The highlights are not too distributed, but it's really in the mid-tones where we're seeing it. And that difference between 0 0.05, 0 0.01 may not seem like much, but it really, it's kind of a lot. So what I'm gonna do now is actually show you what it looks like without it. So I'm gonna go up here and copy these settings. And then I'm going to hit this reset all button. And I'm gonna hit that while you're looking through there. So this is my custom settings and there's the default. You see that bluish green shift? Did you, did you see that? Now it's not awful, right? I mean, if that's, if that's just normal, you plug it in, most people aren't gonna know the difference. But I just, I wanna show you, I wanted to be totally you know, upfront that this is not gonna give you the greatest quality in the world. Um, but it works. And given the price, it works pretty well. It's, I think, 80 bucks. So not too shabby at all. Again, link down below. You know, 80 bucks for a big ring light like this. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, so let's go back to that studio light. I'm going to paste my settings back in so that I get my nice colors back. There we go. And let's take a look at it with, uh, with some skin tone. So I'll just get in here, and there we go. So that is me on the camera. It's, it's nice, right? It's a, it's a nice, obviously, all-around illuminating light. If you go too close to a background, then you're going to get that weird halo 
shadow that happens around ring lights, so that's something to be aware of. It works really nicely when you have your background farther away. If you get too close to the background, yeah, those shadows can get really funky and weird, so you probably want to avoid that. But in this type of environment, I think it works pretty good. So now, the next thing we're going to do is switch to looking through the iPhone. So the iPhone is already, I know you can't really see it, but the iPhone's hooked up up there. So let me turn this on, because that's one of those things that you kind of have to do. Switch this into video mode, turn the camera around, and let's switch to it. So this is looking through the iPhone. Now let's tap the screen to bring the brightness down. So there you go. That's what you're going to get through an iPhone. Now, it might be too bright, right? So I can, I'm going to reach up here and find the dimmer, bring the dimmer down a little bit, let it compensate. And you can see how much more of the background is showing up. Um, the shine on the head is really from the overhead lights. So let's overpower those. You know, it's not awful. It's not awful. Um, the color is not great, but then again, we're using the front-facing camera of an iPhone 6S, so it's not the latest and greatest front-facing cameras. But if you're buying this to use as a live webcam light, and you're going to use your smartphone or even a standard DSLR-type camera, and you're plugging it into a live system, you could do worse. And for 80 bucks, you could do a lot worse. So I'd say when it comes to cheap LED ring lights, this one's a go. It's, uh, it definitely isn't perfect. It's definitely not really, really high quality. But again, for the money, it's kind of hard to beat. So there you go. So if you're looking for a cheap LED ring light, I think this one's all right. Link down below if you want to pick that up. Um, and yeah, I guess that's really all there is to it. OK, folks, for those of you watching live, we are going to jump into the Q&A portion of the show. If you have anything that you would like to queue, I will do my best to A it. We'll see you back here in just a moment. <laughs>